This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read and recorded by Eric S. Piotrowski, FBESP.org, Madison, Wisconsin, USA. 20th of January, 2006. The Tao Te King, or The Tao and Its Characteristics, by Lao Tse. Translated by James Lega. Part 1. Chapters 28 through 37. Chapter 28, Section 1. Who knows his manhood's strength, yet still his female feebleness maintains, as to one channel flow the many drains. All come to him, yea, all beneath the sky. Thus he the constant excellence retains, the simple child again, free from all stains. Who knows how white attracts, yet always keeps himself within black's shade, the pattern of humility displayed, displayed in view of all beneath the sky, he in the unchanging excellence arrayed, endless return to man's first state has made. Who knows how glory shines, yet loves disgrace, nor error for it is pale. Behold his presence in a spacious veil, to which men come from all beneath the sky. The unchanging excellence completes its tale, the simple infant man in him we hail. Chapter 28, Section 2 The unwrought material, when divided and distributed, forms vessels. The sage, when employed, becomes the head of all the officers of government, and in his greatest regulations he employs no violent measures. Chapter 29, Section 1 If any one should wish to get the kingdom for himself, and to effect this by what he does, I see that he will not succeed. The kingdom is a spirit-like thing, and cannot be got by active doing. He who would so win it, destroys it. He who would hold it in his grasp, loses it. Chapter 29, Section 2 The course and nature of things is such that what was in front is now behind. What warmed anon we freezing find. Strength is of weakness, oft the spoil. The store in ruins mocks our toil. Hence the sage puts away excessive effort, extravagance, and easy indulgence. Chapter 30, Section 1 He who would assist a lord of man in harmony with the Tao will not assert his mastery in the kingdom by force of arms. Such a course is sure to meet with its proper return. Chapter 30, Section 2 Wherever a host is stationed, briars and thorns spring up. In the sequence of great armies, there are sure to be bad years. Chapter 30, Section 3 A skillful commander strikes a decisive blow and stops. He does not dare, by continuing his operations, to assert and complete his mastery. He will strike the blow, but will be on his guard against being vain or boastful or arrogant in consequence of it. He strikes it as a matter of necessity. He strikes it, but not from a wish for mastery. Chapter 30, Section 4 When things have attained their strong maturity, they become old. This may be said to be not in accordance with the Tao, and what is not in accordance with it, soon comes to an end. Chapter 31 Section 1 Now arms, however beautiful, are instruments of evil omen, hateful, it may be said, to all creatures. Therefore they who have the Tao do not like to employ them. Chapter 31 Section 2 the superior man ordinarily considers the left hand the most honorable place, but in time of war, the right hand. Those sharp weapons are instruments of evil omen and not the instruments of the superior man. He uses them only on the compulsion of necessity. 
Calm and repose are what he prizes. Victory by force of arms is to him undesirable. To consider this desirable would be to delight in the slaughter of men, and he who delights in the slaughter of men cannot get his will in the kingdom. Chapter 31 Section 3 On occasions of festivity, to be on the left hand is the prized position. On occasions of mourning, the right hand. The second in command of the army has his place on the left. The general commanding-in-chief has his on the right. His place, that is, is assigned to him as in the rites of mourning. He who has killed multitudes of men should weep for them with the bitterest grief, and the victor in battle has his place rightly according to those rites. Chapter 32, Section 1 The Tao, considered as unchanging, has no name. Chapter 32, Section 2 Though in its primordial simplicity it may be small, the whole world dares not deal with one embodying it as a minister. If a feudal prince or the king could guard and hold it, all would spontaneously submit themselves to him. Chapter 32, Section 3 Heaven and earth, under its guidance, unite together and send down the sweet dew, which, without the directions of men, reaches equally everywhere as of its own accord. Chapter 32, Section 4 As soon as it proceeds to action, it has a name. When it once has that name, men can know to rest in it. When they know to rest in it, they can be free from all risk of failure and error. Chapter 32, Section 5 The relation of the Tao to all the world is like that of the great rivers and seas to the streams from the valleys. Chapter 33, Section 1 He who knows other men is discerning. He who knows himself is intelligent. He who overcomes others is strong. He who overcomes himself is mighty. He who is satisfied with his lot is rich. He who goes on acting with energy has a firm will. Chapter 33, Section 2 He who does not fail in the requirements of his position continues long. He who dies and yet does not perish has longevity. Chapter 34, Section 1 all-pervading is the great Tao. It may be found on the left hand and on the right. Chapter 34, Section 2 All things depend on it for their production, which it gives to them, not one refusing obedience to it. When its work is accomplished, it does not claim the name of having done it. It clothes all things as with a garment, and makes no assumption of being their lord. It may be named in the smallest things. All things return to their root and disappear, and do not know that it is it which presides over their doing so. It may be named in the greatest things. Chapter 34, Section 3 Hence the sage is able in the same way to accomplish his great achievements. It is through his not making himself great that he can accomplish them. Chapter 35, Section 1 To him who holds in his hands the great image of the invisible Tao, the whole world repairs. Men resort to him and receive no hurt but find rest, peace, and the feeling of ease. Chapter 35, Section 2 Music and dainties will make the passing guest stop for a time. But though the Tao as it comes from the mouth seems insipid and has no flavor, though it seems not worth being looked at or listened to, the use of it is inexhaustible. Chapter 36, Section 1 When one is about to take an inspiration, he is sure to make a previous expiration. When he is going to weaken another, he will first strengthen him. When he is going to overthrow another, he will first have raised him up. When he is going to despoil another, he will first have made gifts to him. 
This is called hiding the light of his procedure. Chapter 36, Section 2 The soft overcomes the hard, and the weak the strong. Chapter 36, Section 3 Fishes should not be taken from the deep. Instruments for the profit of a state should not be shown to the people. Chapter 37, Section 1 The Tao in its regular course does nothing for the sake of doing it, and so there is nothing which it does not do. Chapter 37, Section 2 if princes and kings were able to maintain it, all things would of themselves be transformed by them. Chapter 37, Section 3 If this transformation became to me an object of desire, I would express the desire by the nameless simplicity. Simplicity without a name is free from all external aim. With no desire at rest and still, all things go right as of their will. End of part one.